Hello, I'm Ron Miscavige, and this is another lesson in life or life lesson. What the hell ever we're going to call this in the end, I don't know. But for right now, you have a choice. Anyway, this morning I want to tell you a story to illustrate a point, and as all life lessons, I think you'll get something out of this. Now, to start off, this is a story about when I was in the Marine Corps back in the 50s. And I was stationed in a place called Quantico, Virginia. Now, I actually got in the Marine Band as a, almost an accident. What happened is I was working in a facility that would train officers on war problems. And they were having a talent contest at the base auditorium. And I needed some money to go to see my girlfriend up in Philadelphia. So I entered the contest and I thought, let me see what happens. I won first prize. I got the money and I went to see my girlfriend, came back after the weekend and uh, the base commandant who was at the talent contest ordered me into the Marine Band in Quantico, which was okay with me because I'm a musician and I love playing music. That's how this had to start so you'd see how come I went to Cincinnati, Ohio. One of the things we did while I was in the band, we went to Cincinnati to play for a dedication of a statue of Christopher Columbus, which was great. And very people were very friendly. It was, a, it was a very successful event. I think we played on the TV station there and uh, some other things that we did. But in the evening, when all was said and done, we were granted liberty. And uh, I decided to go, so as you would say, on the town. And I had a couple other Marines who went with me. And we went across the river to a town called Covington, Kentucky. The river is the Ohio River, and if you go, just go across it, you're in the state of Kentucky instead of in Ohio. Why we went there, I don't know, but we went, and we went in this club, and the first room that we went into, there's a pool table, and this is where my antenna went up a little bit, and I think it contributed to the way I was thinking in the series of events that happened, which I'm going to tell you about right now. There was a guy shooting pool, <clears throat> and he was leaning over making a shot, and his coat jacket came open, and I saw a revolver that he had in a shoulder holster. So I took note of that. We went into the back room, and this was a huge room, very similar to a room you might see, let's say, at a, an Amvets club or a VFW. Not decorated great, but big, held a lot of people, a lot of tables in there. There was probably a hundred people in that room and they were playing music and people were dancing. So I sat down with the two friends I went out with and um, some girls that we met and were sitting at the table with us. Listen, in those days, if you wore a uniform and I had a Marine Corps uniform on, that was something special. So it was no accident that some girls would want to come over and befriend us. So we're sitting there drinking beer. Now, I noticed at one point that some people were looking at me, and, uh, staring is more the proper word, I think, and I'm continuing to drink beer and shoot the breeze and stuff. We weren't dancing or anything. Then I noticed a lot of people were staring at me, and I started to think, what the hell's going on here? So I put off going to the bathroom as long as possible because I thought something might be happening that would get me in a confrontation with some of these people. Finally, I had to go to the bathroom. You know, we drank maybe a couple pitchers of beer by then. I go in the bathroom and about five guys follow me in. Now, I'm doing my duty there and I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to handle this? There's no way I can fight my way out of five guys. And I'm thinking, okay, I could punch one of them in the throat. I mean, I actually thought these things. Getting myself prepared, I guess the adrenaline started coming up at this point. I could shove the other guy into somebody else, knock them over. And at that point, I wasn't going to stick around and box these guys. I mean, I, I wanted to get the fuck out of there. So all these thoughts are going to my mind. And finally, I thought to myself, well, I got to turn around and get out of here. So I turned around and faced them, and I'm expecting the worst and all of a sudden, one of them says to me, what's it like to be a Marine? Now, let me tell you something. You could have knocked me over with a goddamn feather. 
shocked me. I spent maybe the next 15, 20 minutes talking about how you'd qualify to join the Marines, how boot camp was, the training you go through, how your daily uh, work goes by, your duties. And they were knocked out, and I'm sure some of them joined the Marines. Now, it wasn't me, but it was the fact that I represented the Marine Corps. And they held it in high esteem, and that's a reputation that the Marines have, not by some publicity stunts they do, but by actual products and the protecting of this nation in, in the, the highest manner. I mean, the Marines are a special outfit, let's face it. But I represented the Marines at that point, and I, I spoke to them, and they were very thankful that I did. And they shake my hand when I was walking out of there. And what's, what's the lesson here? Well, I would probably say it's things aren't always what they seem to be. You follow me now? In other words, here, I come in the club, I see a guy with a shoulder holster on and a gun. You know, obviously, you think, what the hell is this, you know? Walk in, a whole bunch of people are staring at me. A lot of people, there's maybe about 100 people in there. Guys follow me in the men's room. I think I want to get the shit kicked out of me. And it turns out they were admiring the fact that I represented the United States Marines. So that's what I say. Things aren't always what they seem to be. What can you do about this? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Get mentally prepared for the worst contingency. Stay focused. Don't panic. Don't start coming apart at the seams. Don't start getting weak need. Just get prepared for any contingency, whether it's the fight or flight, you know, either stay there, do your best, or get the hell away from the, a dangerous situation that you know you're not going to win. You might be a tough guy, but I don't think you're, I don't think many people are going to take on four or five people at one time. So that's my lesson for today. And remember, things aren't always what they seem to be. And sometimes they're way better than what you think they are. And as a matter of fact, I can tell you from my own experience, most of the time they are better than you think they are. But that was one that was a complete surprise. And I'm actually glad it happened because it, it taught me that lesson that get prepared, do whatever you have to do mentally, plan out your actions, don't lose your cool. Remember, the worse the situation is, the cooler you have to be. I know you say that might not be easy. Yes, it is if you practice it and just focus yourself. So that's, that's the lesson I wanted to give you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you can benefit from this. And if you want to see what else I do, go to my website, therealronmiscavige.com. You'll see the other things I do. I've written books, some humorous, some not that humorous. Uh, True Confessions of a Kid is a very funny book you can read. and Delightful stories, true stories about my growing up in the coal mining area of Pennsylvania. And another book called Ruthless. And I also, I also interview other people. So uh, check out the website. Meanwhile, I'm Ron Miscavige. That was your life lesson or lessons in life for today. I'll see you on the next story. Bye-bye now.